Hi, I'm Lisa from Australian Travel and Migration Blog, DreamingofDanender.com. Today I'm going to compare Sydney and Melbourne for anybody who's thinking of moving to either of those cities. I live in Sydney, but I have spent time in Melbourne too. I've got overviews of both of these cities on my blog, so I'll leave links below, as well as a link to a free city comparison chart for Australian cities. Okay, let's go. The first difference is the population of Sydney and Melbourne. They are the two most populated cities in Australia. Sydney is the biggest with five and a half million inhabitants and Melbourne has 5.2 million inhabitants. So they're both very big, very diverse cities and very spread out. Melbourne's population is growing at a faster rate than Sydney's and it is predicted to overtake Sydney by 2030. So we'll see if that comes true. The second difference is the location. Sydney is on the southern end of the east coast of Australia and Melbourne is on the eastern end of the south coast of Australia. They're around a 10 hour drive apart or 12 hours if you go via the coastline, which in Australian terms is quite close. They're kind of neighbours in terms of the, the big cities. The east coast of Australia and the southeastern corner of Australia are well developed and populated. So you've got good transport links to other cities. You're not isolated like you would be somewhere like Perth. They've both got international airports, so you can easily reach other places in Australia and overseas. Difference number three is the weather. Sydney and Melbourne do have different climates. Sydney is generally a little bit warmer than Melbourne, but people say Melbourne's got a similar climate to Britain. It's definitely, definitely warmer than Britain and it reaches some hotter temperatures. In the summertime, Sydney and Melbourne have an average temperature of around 26 degrees in the daytime, but at night, Sydney falls to about 18 degrees, whereas Melbourne drops to about 14, so a little bit colder than Sydney overnight in the summer. In the winter, Sydney averages around 17 degrees in the daytime, whereas Melbourne drops down to around 13 or 14 degrees, so it is quite a bit colder in Melbourne. At night time in the winter, Sydney is around 7 or 8 degrees and Melbourne is around 6 degrees. In terms of rain, Sydney and Melbourne have around 100 days of rain per year on average, but Sydney has about double the volume, so when it rains in Sydney, it's really torrentially raining. Sydney has around 100 days of sunshine a year and Melbourne only has about 48 days of sunshine a year. So Sydney is significantly more sunny than Melbourne. Melbourne has a lot more cloudy days even though the rain is lighter there. Melbourne's well known for having very erratic weather so it can change really dramatically in a day. I remember when I was there, I only spent about two weeks there the last time and it was about 42 degrees one day and then just suddenly dropped to 15 overnight. There was also this weird kind of big sandstorm thing. I thought we were having a tornado or something. And another day we were on the beach and suddenly this huge wind came out of nowhere and everyone just grabbed their stuff and ran. So it's got very unpredictable weather in Melbourne. Difference number four is the property prices in Sydney and Melbourne. Sydney is the most expensive city in Australia in terms of buying property. Melbourne is usually the second most expensive, but Canberra has recently overtaken it. It's worth noting that during the pandemic, the prices for property have shot up in Australia in most places in a really unprecedented way. So it's maybe an unstable sort of time to look at the differences in property prices between the cities. Regional areas have become more common to live in. So prices have gone up a lot there. And we are really at the peak of a big housing boom. So Sydney and Melbourne are now starting to drop in price on average, whereas a lot of the other cities are still going up. So here are some median property prices in Sydney and Melbourne. This is from a report from CoreLogic at the start of May 2022. The median house price in Sydney was 1.4 million, whereas the median house price in Melbourne at that time was 1.0 million. The median unit price in Sydney was $831,000 and the median unit price in Melbourne was $631,000, so quite a bit cheaper. Also note that interest rates have just been raised for the first time in years and years, so property prices are predicted to start coming down across the next year or two. Number five is the difference in rental prices in Sydney and Melbourne. These figures are from the same report from CoreLogic. The average weekly rent for a house in Sydney was $630, whereas in Melbourne it was $460. So Sydney is 37% higher. The average weekly rent on a unit or flat in Sydney was $510, whereas in Melbourne it was $420. So that's 21% higher in Sydney. Difference number six is the beaches in Sydney and Melbourne. They are both coastal cities and they both have beaches. Sydney is very well known for having lots and lots of lovely beaches. It's got over 100 beaches. It's got beaches inside bays, along the coastlines. It's got yeah, lots of beautiful scenery. Melbourne has beaches, but it's not so famous for its beaches. A lot of Melbourne's coastline is around Port Phillip Bay. So you've got Brighton Beach, that's well known for its colorful huts 
and you've got St Kilda Beach which is probably the most well known I think. I went to a nice one called Black Rock as well. You've also got the Mornington Peninsula if you travel a little bit further. I personally think Sydney definitely beats Melbourne in terms of how nice the beaches are but I guess that's up to every individual. Difference number seven is the nightlife and city attractions. I think I have to say that Melbourne definitely wins this one. Melbourne is probably best known for its amazing nightlife and culture and art scene. It's got lots and lots of cafes. It's very, very fashion focused. It's definitely a more kind of fashion conscious city than Sydney, I would say. I remember arriving in Melbourne the last time in my backpacker shorts and t-shirts and feeling immediately boring and uncool in what I was wearing. So Sydney does have lots of nightlife and theatres and arts and things like that, but it's better known for its scenery and beautiful harbour and beaches. So I would say Melbourne is a more kind of cool, edgy, fashionable city with more city attractions and Sydney is more of a pretty kind of glam outdoorsy city with more natural attractions. Remember this is just based on my observation and my experiences and somebody else might have a, a totally different viewpoint to me. Also remember that both of these cities are huge and they span inland for miles and miles. So if you're coming as a visitor or maybe you're going to live here for a year and you're quite young and you want to live in the city, then things like city attractions and beaches might be important. But to a lot of people, if you're coming here with a family and you want to buy a family home, you're probably more likely to be just in an ordinary family suburb inland. So in that case, there might not be that much difference between the two cities for you. If you are coming here and you want to buy a family home, if you're coming permanently, it's probably worth looking into Perth and Adelaide and Brisbane as well because the property there is significantly cheaper than Sydney and Melbourne. Difference number eight is the nearby holiday destinations. Both Sydney and Melbourne are on beautiful parts of the coastline and they're really surrounded with amazing places to go inland and on the coastline for weekends away or holidays. Both cities have international airports so you can easily go abroad and being sort of across on the eastern side of Australia you've got loads of choice in places that you can drive or fly to so if you want to nip up to Queensland for a, a winter getaway in the sun that's really easy from either city. Here are some ideas of trips you can take from Sydney or Melbourne. So from Sydney a couple of hours inland you've got the Blue Mountains which is absolutely beautiful you've also got the Southern Highlands just to the southeast. From Melbourne you can get to the Grampians mountain ranges in three hours and you've also got the Dandenong ranges a bit more close. In terms of beach destinations from Sydney you can nip up to the central coast within an hour and a half that's got lots of beaches and national parks. From Melbourne you can go to Torquay or Lawn which are really great surf towns. For scenic drives Melbourne is close to the Great Ocean Road which is probably the most famous scenic drive in Australia. It's got these amazing rock formations, it's really really pretty. Sydney's got the Grand Pacific Drive which goes down from the Royal National Park to Wollongong. It's a really lovely coastal drive where you've got the famous Sea Cliff Bridge and lots of great little beach towns. If you're into skiing you've got Kosciuszko National Park which is between the two cities inland so that gets snow in the winter. You've also got Canberra between the two cities, it's a bit close to Sydney, but that's great for a cultural weekend away. You can also do a really great longer road trip between Sydney and Melbourne. I'll link to that below, I've got an itinerary for that trip. That's it for my differences between Sydney and Melbourne. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking of moving to either of those cities. Remember to check out my links to my blog below, I've got lots of information to help you decide where to live in Australia. Please like and subscribe for more videos on life in Australia. Thanks for watching. From Melbourne you can get to Lawn or to from Melbourne you can get to Sydney or look oh my god from Mel <laughs>